So thank you very much for inviting me. Um, open source uh, software and open source uh, standards are uh, an important topic to me. And uh, timely conversation, I think one that we should be having more in our industry. So I hope that this is the beginning of this conversation. Uh, very happy to be part of it. Uh, I'm gonna spend um, my time to talk about Open BIM. Uh, so open source is really centered and uh, supported by a community. So, um, you know, I can't emphasize that enough. It's really, uh, you know, uh, created and supported by this uh, centered around community. Uh, so my talk is going to be equal parts, you know, uh, discussing the community uh, that supports Open BIM and creates Open BIM uh, standards and technology, as well as the technology itself. Um, and so the community that's really um, uh, supporting and developing Open BIM uh, globally is uh, Building Smart International, and here nationally is uh, Building Smart Canada. So I'll begin with a little bit of background. So back in 1995, Autodesk organized a private alliance of 12 companies to, you know, discuss the benefits of interoperability. Uh, after a year of discussion, uh, they came back with three conclusions. One, that interoperability was viable and important. Uh, two, that the standards uh, must be open. Um, they also must be international and they cannot be private or proprietary. And then three, that the Alliance must open up its membership uh, globally and to parties uh, you know, around the world uh, beyond the, the 12 companies that were participating. So in uh, 1996, the IAI, the International Alliance for Interoperability was formed. Um, it did uh, years of work and then eventually in 2008, it became Building Smart uh, International, which uh, better reflected the nature and goals of uh, what they were working on at the time. So Building Smart International's focus is on standardizing processes, workflows, and procedures for Open BIM, enabling a uh, digital transformation. Uh, it's made up of an international community. Uh, today, there's 29 chapters. Uh, the chapters are national uh, membership organizations that share the vision and goals of uh, Building Smart International. And they're committed and participate in the development of these uh, open digital ways of working for the built asset industry and environment. And each of these chapters, again, participates in the development of the uh, standards uh, internationally, as well as brings those standards to their to their countries and develops programs uh, that that localize uh, the international standards in their countries. So again, delegates from all around the world participate in these summits. Canada is included in that. Um, and so um, here we have Building Smart Canada. So it was established in uh, 2011, and it was initially run by the Institute for BIM in Canada, uh, but now is a um, uh, self-governed uh, non-for-profit. It believes in collaborative approaches based on open BIM tools, technologies, and processes and provides the appropriate body for uh, Canadian BIM standards to be developed. So um, again, these uh, Canadian delegates uh, participate in, in uh, summits that happen twice a year and participate in the, the discussions around uh, open BIM. Another advantage to having a, a, a Canadian chapter is, is that we learn from what is happening around the world. So we're really engaged in those conversations and can bring back um, all of that uh, uh, information back to Canada, lessons learned from countries that are, uh, you know, further along in their implementation of um, these standards and uh, open, open BIM practices. So Open BIM is a universal approach to the collaborative design, uh, realization, and operation of the built environment based on open uh, standards and workflows. Uh, it's established to enable global universal data sharing for BIM data. Uh, sorry, data sharing for BIM data. So it's regardless of the proprietary tools that are used or the proprietary platforms that are used. Uh, and it's a common language for a wide range of processes. Um, it provides a project data set that can be used 
for the entire life cycle. And I think that that's a really important uh, point to emphasize. Again, we're thinking about data for the entire uh, life cycle and uh, the integrity of that data for its entire life cycle. So why standardize? You know, it is easier just to do your own thing and to uh, leverage uh, proprietary tools, but there are many advantages to using um, or to, you know, to um, adopting a standardized BIM process. So for owners and public authorities, they have better control and uh, over their entire uh, data portfolio. Um, they can also get consistent deliverables um, for all of their projects for operation and maintenance. For architects, engineers, cons contractors, um, trades, uh, you have the flexibility to use the tools of, of your choice, right? So you're not conformed or confined to using what's been dictated um, based on uh, issues with interoperability. So you really have that flexibility to work in whatever tools are efficient and whatever workflows uh, are efficient. And then for facility operators, they can make better decisions um, and rely on the information again throughout the, the life cycle. So operations is, of course, the longest uh, phase. And, uh, you know, operators can now rely on that information to, uh, throughout that uh, entire operating phase. Uh, product product manu manufacturers, software vendors, um, they really have, you know, market opportunities and can expand their market reach. Uh, using uh, tools that, that can service a, a larger audience. And um, educators and students can, can work and study based on standardized workflows so that we're all working kind of in unison in, um, in the same way. And society benefits because uh, we're improving our built environment rather than and focusing on solving really big problems that we have uh, today, rather than uh, you know concerned about uh, you know interoperability or not working collaboratively. Again, this is a large collaborative um, industry. Uh, lots of people are involved in all of our projects, so uh, working together, of course, is uh, towards a common process, common workflows, and uh, universally consistent data is, of course, uh, hugely beneficial. So despite all of the advantages of open BIM, uh, what we see is that open BIM is, is misunderstood and uh, has not been widely adopted, at least here in Canada. Um, this was a survey that was done by the University of Toronto uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, the Toronto BIM community uh, just before COVID. Uh, we're working on a, a new survey to get uh, you know, more current uh, uh, stats. But of the 800 participants, 43% of them weren't aware of open BIM and 75% had no experience using it. So lots of work to do here in Canada. Building Smart is going to be, um, is aware of this and we're gonna be working on, you know, um, educating, you know, spreading awareness about Open BIM, uh, again, here locally in, in Canada. And this is a great event. Thank you for inviting me. This is the beginning of that conversation. So very happy to, uh, to, to share what I know about open BIM. So I'm gonna go over at high level. It can get very technical. We're gonna keep it just like the fundamental um, standards uh, for this talk. So there's five base standards for open BIM. Um, the first is uh, the IDM. So that's the information delivery manual. Essentially it's what we're gonna exchange, you know, documents exactly what uh, information needs to be exchanged by different parties. Um, this is usually done with process maps and, you know, uh, in a report of some kind. Uh, the MVD, the model view definition, is um, taking those information requirements and actually applying them to the technology. So it is the smart filters. And I'm going to talk a lot more about MVD because I think this is where some of the confusion around um, IFC uh, uh, exists. So we're going to talk more about uh, MVD. The IFD, which is really now referred to as the Building Smart Data Dictionary, is all the mapping of terms. So a door is a door. Uh, seems like that's a straightforward thing, but uh, you know they have to map it against all of these different tools and in all these different languages. So it's quite an undertaking, um, which uh, Building Smart is uh, you know uh, participating in and uh, uh, creating. BCF is the, the BIM collaboration format. So this is how we uh, collaborate using our IFC models. And then IFC, which is industry foundation class. And that's the file, that open BIM file format. That's what people are usually referring to as thinking about that being the only component of open BIM. 
So lots of acronyms, I know, um, but uh, uh, we'll get through. We're going to talk about three in more detail. Uh, so I'll begin with IFC. Uh, it's an internationally recognized data schema for BIM. Uh, it contains both geometric data and non-geometric data. And this uh, standardized data model is open. Uh, it's a, the open exchange uh, format. It's free and it's well documented. So you can go to Building Smart. There's many, many pages of technical documents, many white papers on open BIM, uh, very well documented. Um, and it works by exporting your native data data um, out of your you know BIM uh, tool and you export it to an IFC file. And that's how another application can open, open the, the data. IFC is always a subset of data from the native format. And we're gonna talk about that when we talk about MVD. So the origins of IFC date back to 1995. It's the, at the time it was the most uh, mature framework uh, to define a data schema was uh, STEP. Uh, it provided the widest compatibility and the smallest file format uh, based on import and export. And it was the best choice to build the IFC uh, schema when it was targeting file-based exchange. Uh, the schema is a uh, plain text um, uh, uh, file you can uh, see here. And although it can kind of be, you know, human read, it's really intended to be uh, read, you know, uh, written by machine and read by machine. Um, the IFC schema uh, contains classes of objects and their relationships using the express modeling uh, language. So there's hundreds of uh, software applications that are IFC compatible. Uh, this, the schema is released by Building Smart, and then each software uh, application has to be certified by Building Smart. So that it undergoes a number of tests uh, with the data exchange to, you know, make sure that it, it's functioning properly and all the data is being exchanged. Um, it's quite an onerous um, uh, process. It sometimes takes um, software vendors or software tools many, many years to get certified because they can't pass the tests. I think Building Smart right now is uh, uh, looking at changing the way that the uh, certification is working to expedite, you know, passing and getting certified. Uh, you can go to the website on uh, Building Smart's uh, website to see which applications are certified of um, the different IFC uh, versions. So the IFC schema um, has released many versions. It's constantly growing. There's many versions constantly being uh, released. The most relevant uh, today is uh, two by three and IFC four. And then right now they're working on IFC five. So IFC two by three was, you know, a, a, a continuous improvement to the, the previous releases of IFC. And it came out in uh, 2006. It, um, you know, has issues and, you know, there's some geometry issues and it's not perfect. Um, uh, they're continuing to work on it. Um, but you know, uh, you know so, some geometry issues for sure, and then there was some uh, semantic um, uh, definitions that weren't included, and they've been working on that since uh, you know 2006. Um, IFC uh, two by two two by four, sorry, was um, underway, and then there were so many improvements that they ended up re-releasing re it as IFC four rather than two by three. So it was some of a name change. Um, and they've also just recently released uh, IFC 4.3. So 4.3 was uh, had some significant improvements. So it uh, you know improved the uh, optimized the file size. It corrected some of those technical um, problems that we were seeing with the curves. Um, you know more support for the for curve geometry. There's also enhancements with BIM and GIS interoperability, another very important um, uh, improvement. And the most notable improvement that uh, everyone was very uh, happy to see was the extensions for infrastructure. So IFC had been really focused on uh, vertical infrastructure and um, and was really missing all of the semantics for. Um, uh, for uh, uh, horizontal infrastructure. So the release of uh, 4.3 was um, much needed. So now with new concepts like digital twins and uh, smart cities and, uh, and uh, smart buildings, there's an increased demand and need for uh, partial updates rather than entire file exchange updates. So 
Um, you know, we, we're looking at needing, uh, you know, high, um, uh, uh, the ability to exchange uh, just objects rather than entire models. Uh, so file-based exchange is, uh, you know, uh, not able to keep up with, you know, the, the use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, because the information is siloed within files. Uh, also, the express programming language has become, become dated. So uh, they're working right now, IFC 5 will um, be a technological uh, revision to IFC 4.3. So the semantic um, definitions, the semantic scope is going to be the same because you need a lot of consensus globally to increase, like to change the uh, semantic scope. So IFC 5 will be the same. Um, uh, it will just be the technological improvements, but very much needed. Uh, very excited to see to see how that that uh, comes about. Okay, so the so I'm going to talk about MVDs here. Uh, the model view definition is the subset of IFC. Um, so the main role of the MVD is to um, reflect the exchange requirements that were outlined in the IDM, right? The, um, um, you know, what, what, not everything needs to be exchanged amongst um, uh, different tools or different parties uh, when collaborating. And so the MVD is, is uh, used in, in order to do that. So um, any IFC export is using an MVD, okay? So it's important that when we're talking about IFC exchange, you're really talking about MVDs and what kind of MVD you're using. Um, so uh, um, I think actually this this um, image here on the bottom really describes, you know, the MVD is like a smart filter. It just it just takes parts parts of the schema and exchanges it and gives it to the you know the recipient, um, and the MVD changes depending on which one you've selected. Okay, so that's, again, I think that's, this is where some of the confusion happens. It's like, oh, I didn't get all of the content or, uh, you know, only partial of the content. That's intentional. You know, it, it really is um, um, about exchanging the data that's required to be exchanged. Not everything needs to be exchanged. Okay, so, um, so we have an IFC version, which is continuing to be updated. That's the two by three, four, 4.3, 5. Those are the, those are the versions. And then you have the MVD, which is the subset of the IFC um, uh, exchange. So, um, okay, so, so I'm just gonna show some examples to make kind of uh, crystallize the idea of the MVD. So this is Revit, but every um, uh, tool has some sort of dialogue box that looks similar, you know? So you select your IFC plus the MVD. Um, and so here we're seeing, you know, two by three, coordination view uh, to 2.0. That's the most popular uh, MVD right now. And part of the reason why that's the most popular is some of the um, uh, protocols or, you know, um, uh, requirements from owners are using, you know, that they were written a long time ago and they just haven't changed it to the, to four, um, IFC four, but so two by three is the most common and you have your coordination view. And so what the data exchange is going to be for that is, is to support uh, coordination amongst the design team and the construction team, right? So that's what its intention is versus, you know, um, IFC two by three basic FM handover view, which is really intended for facility management and has the ability to add on attribute information to, um, to things like equipment and furnish furnishings and so forth. Right, and then there's lots of other MVDs, you know, structural analysis, space boundary, and so forth. Um, the MVDs got a little out of out of hand in the two by three version, um, and so they kind of reined it back in in IFC four, officially um, uh, releasing two uh, MVDs. So we have reference view, and then we have design uh, transfer view. Um, so reference view again is is intended for that coordination uh, and collaboration. Um, and intended to be for reference. Whereas the design transfer view is, um, is slightly more uh, improved than that. It's not a bi-directional, you know, it doesn't have the ability to do round tripping. It's not intended to do round tripping where you bring it back in, you edit it, and then you export again. Uh, but you are able to unidirectionally uni uh, transfer data so that they can add on to it. So if they have a renovation, you know, they can continue to um, work on, uh, build on the um, IFC file. 
Okay, so the last um, format I'm going to talk about is uh, BCF, and so that's the, the BIM collaboration format. It started in uh, 2009, and it's now uh, Building Smart International um, Open BIM Standard, and it allows uh, two BIM applications to communicate um, model-based issues uh, by leveraging the IFC file. So um, what you're doing is you're really transferring XML uh, formatted data, which includes, you know, a view, a PNG view of the, of the issue. Um, it also includes the IFC coordinates as well as the UID numbers. And that's how you're able to, um, you know, communicate an issue uh, to uh, another application. So back many, many years ago, I used to write in, a, in, a, in an email this problem at, at, you know, grid line such and such on level such and such, you know, to describe where, where an issue was or a coordination issue is uh, using the BCF, it will actually bring that applicant, like the recipient will be able to see exactly where the issue is, you know, with that, with that information. So a uh, much better way of uh, collaborating around a uh, uh, building information model. Uh, there's two ways to do this, either with the file-based exchange or with a web service. Uh, the file-based exchange just, you know, you export the, the BCF file as, as, as a BCF zip file, and then you just exchange them. Um, most people, the way I've seen it, um, use the BCF server, so it's a web-based uh, application, um, and then everyone just syncs, syncs to it, so you're actually able to see um, uh, the issues updating, you know, kind of real-time. Uh, things like BIMTRAC or Revisto, I'm sure you're familiar with, those uh, are leveraging that technology. So um, I think the one takeaway I'd like, action item I'd, I'd leave everyone with is to, you know, become more aware of your open or closed uh, BIM practices. Um, you know, do you start with the vendor, with the tools, you know, with the software, or do you, do you think about the data and the lifespan of that data, the quality of the data? Um, you know, are you, is your data locked within a tool or within a, within a platform, within a proprietary system? And how does that affect your project or your business or your industry? I think those are things that we should, we should be thinking about. It's not necessarily that everything has to change, you know, overnight or that you can go, you know, completely open. Um, but it is important to understand how, um, how open or closed your BIM practices are. And to really kind of challenge and think about think about it. So, if you want to learn more about Open BIM um, and Open Standards, and uh, or if you uh, you know want to join the community, uh, you know you should definitely do that. It's a huge community. This is an image that was taken at the uh, Montreal uh, Summit uh, back in October. Um, you know, delegates from all around the world were there, people that were developing IFC that have been working on IFC, um, as well as all of these standards were there. You could just go over and ask them, you know, why did you do this? What happened there? Um, and, you know, there was just so much expertise. I really encourage, um, you know, attending, attending these uh, kind of uh, summits or getting involved. Um, it's an important time in our industry. There's a lot of change happening right now, um, and these types of communities are the ones that are shaping it. Uh, so I really, you know, encourage you to, to get involved. If you uh, can't go to the summit, the next one's in uh, Rome in March. Uh, there's there's going to be more happening in Canada, just like this event here today. Um, so, you know, please get involved. We have a lot of uh, research projects and uh, projects happening with uh, Building Smart Canada. Um, you know, this is a, a short list of them. There's many, many other activities. You can become uh, a member of um, Building Smart Canada uh, and participate in the development of the standards, you know, here and participate in the conversations that are happening here and even just helping identify what the needs are. I think these are, um, you know, again, it's an important time in our industry. So I really encourage you to uh, help shape it and uh, participate. You don't have to be a, a programmer or, you know, an expert in all of this technology. You can just join and learn. That's how I started with Building Smart Canada. I, you know, I wanted to learn more and have done over the years just through being um, connected to so many, so many uh, forward-thinking people. So Open BIM is a, is a mindset and an approach to uh, collaboration and, uh, and to uh, data exchange. So 
thank you very much for having me. You can always uh, uh, contact me, email, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, but I really encourage you to, to uh, participate and get involved in these open, BIM, open communities, open standard communities. So thank you.